Hello folks. I have some random thoughts today. Nothing nothing profound. These are just some of the pens that I bought recently in that lot of mystery bits and I have subsequently fixed some of them. This one, for example, in addition to needing a new sack on it, it didn't have a cap. So I have a cap and I can put it on right there. There's, you can see there's a, a trauma that this cap had in its life. It was wandering around writing whatever it writes and it got a nice dent could have been a car accident, or a train accident, or maybe an airplane accident. But the nib, which is the important part, survived. And what I like about this nib is it's extremely fine, but it has, I don't know if it's a flexibility so much as when you press it down, just more ink happens to be able to come out. No, there's a little tiny bit of flex. No, hardly any. So, you know, let's pretend this is a view of the iridium ball hitting the paper magnified a million times. Um, you know, when, when it's just touching the paper, it makes a line like that, you know, depending on pressure. When you press down hard, what you're doing is you're actually just sort of indenting the paper and the, uh, the capillary action, there's more contact of this sphere rather than less contact. So it's not really flexible, though you can sort of treat it as a flexible nib. You can almost push it, you can push it up backwards, you know, and it can make a thicker line. So this pen, is really a faux flexible nib. It doesn't actually flex, but it looks like it might. So I can do this with a ballpoint pen actually. I can just lightly touch the ballpoint pen to the paper and press down and get the thicker, the implied thicker line. Well, the line is thicker, but implied flexible nib. Anyway, this pen is, this is for the man, I'm thinking, not a, not a dame, but a man who um, smokes a big, nasty, smelling, smelling cigar in fine French restaurants, ruining the experience for everyone in the place, and probably even the two stores on either side of the restaurant because this cigar is so nasty. Um, with the only possible exception that um, the fine nib is sort of suggests to me that the guy that owns this pen is slightly sensitive, only slightly though, in the factory that he owns uh, and employs children as labor. He what has he done to make him? make their lives just slightly nicer. I can't think, I can't think what he would do that wouldn't actually in the end benefit him other than having happy workers, which of course is not his. When, when people smile, evidently, he's read a study that people are smiling, they are not actually as productive as people. That, that is a study that, if it existed, I would not believe. I think people are more productive when they're happy, but anyway. He, um, I don't know what he does to make... It's a slightly more sensitive nib than, than the pen deserves. Now, I'm, I'm waxing poetic about something I know nothing about, of course. This nib uh, would be great for a writer it could be good for a very exacting
person who draws patent drawings. You know, he measures exactly. Of course, they do all of that on CAD now, but never mind. We're not talking about today. We're talking about in the olden days. And, you know, he appreciates, it, this person appreciates the the two sort of notes it can make. It can make a thin line and it can make a fat line based on pressure, but really there's, it, it sings two notes and it sings them loud and clear. They're always on key. There's no flats. There's no sharps. And the person who uses this pen goes from A to B without a curve. It just, it's a very matter-of-fact pen. And it's really sturdy, and it, it feels like, you know, a Chevy truck built tough. You know, it just has that, these always, these pens always seem to have that quality to me. They're a Chevy pickup truck. This is a pen that, if you watched yesterday's video, this was covered in a sort of whitish, I don't want to say mold, mildew or something and every once in a while you see pens that have that uh, coating and uh, I don't know what causes it but someone I'm sure does they've done studies and uh, so this one cleaned up very very nicely and it has a really nice flexible nib on it it's an ever sharp it's one of the last ever sharps made using Fountain, for fountain pens. It's on the tail end. This is just as the ballpoint pen craze was starting, or maybe just before. This is a version of their Skyline pen where the cap, the Symphony pen where the cap was plastic rather than metal. And the design is really slick, I think. One of the common problems with this pen though is there's a sl they slightly warp out of true there's always there's sort of a banana curve to it but if you're able to look past that asymmetry you'd find this pen really really nice and this is a good one for drawing because as you can see it goes that way nicely without spattering or scratching or anything. Pretty, uh, you know, semi-flexible nib. And this will end up in the hands if I don't keep it myself. I, I may not have this particular one in my collection. I, I like to have a an example of... I don't, they don't need every color of every model, but I like to have every model. And I'm not positive I have this one. And... But if I do already have one, or I have one in another color, I might keep the black one because I really like black pens. And speaking of black, we'll go on to our next, our next pen. This one, no, this one, yes. This one had a nib in it, and as I correctly guessed, it was broken. One of the iridium times was off, so I will affix a new nib in it. And as I was looking for a cap to go with it before I realized the, the nib was broken, um, I found this cap in my parts bin, and it it's one of their what they call autograph uh, bands. And for some extra money, you could buy a pen that had 14 karat trim and they would take a facsimile of your signature and engrave it onto the band, the wide band. And this guy's name I really like and as many of you know I like pens that have names on them especially if the names are sort of poetic or interesting or if the engraving is really nicely done. So I'm going to try to find the sort of nib that this man uh, had. I'll try to f match a nib with his name. His name is Duncan Black, and his handwriting is pretty miserable if this is, in fact, his signature. 
I mean, his signature is much more readable than mine is, so I, I should not cast stones. But Duncan Black, um, I think, I love that name. Duncan Black. He sounds like a private eye. Man of danger, Duncan Black. And so he'll have sort of a masculine but slightly mysterious kind of flexible nib to it if I can figure out where I can find that and maybe that will match his personality or the personality that I've decided he should have if Dun if Duncan Duncan if you're watching uh, and want to send me an email and tell me what kind of man you are in fact I might if you're an insurance salesman you're going to have a different kind of nib than if you were a private eye man of danger. So that's this one. And again, this cap did not come with the lot I bought. This pen did, and it had a broken nib. So. This pen, I got two pens that essentially look like this. No, I got a pen and a half. This barrel was all by itself and this had a barrel with a nib and the nib that was on this lifetime that matched this lifetime cap was a lifetime nib and as most shapers of this period lifetime nibs were guaranteed guaranteed for life and to ensure that they would last for life they made them pretty, for the most part, they were pretty sturdy and solid and inflexible. The feather touch nib, however, that was on this barrel has this really nice flexibility to it. So I thought, and it didn't have a cap, and I thought, well, I'll rob Peter to pay Paul. So for the, for the purists out there, uh, there should not be a white dot on that cap. And one day, I looked through my parts to see if I had a green pen that did not have that white dot, uh, green cap, but I did not find one. So right now this is in my pocket. Well, it's not in my pocket now, you can tell that, but it's in, on my desk and filled with ink, or will be filled with ink as soon as I fill it. And, um... In fact, I will fill it right now because the, the next pen, I'm going to show you how it fills. So this is a standard lever fill pen. Put it in ink, pull that out, put, oops, slide it back in, count to three, and it's full. Though it sounded more slurpy than full. Sometimes if you, you suck in air as well as ink, you end up... Now, see, I, I sucked in more air than ink. There, it didn't slurp there, so that's now full. See, lots of ink in that there pen. So just watch this stream of ink. That's pretty darn good. It has a nice big sack in it. And now it's empty of ink, but anyway, it's, it's really a nice nib. And this... May, I may keep this one. Uh, I may decide to sell it. I may have this one already. I'll have to take a look. I may have a green striped pen of this size. Um, but you saw how that one filled. And there's another pen called the Schaefer Snorkel, which is over-designing at its zenith. It's hard to find a pen that's more over-designed than this pen. And it's what it sold itself on was you don't need to wipe your pen because when you were done filling this, there would be ink all over that nib and maybe a little bit on the section and you would have to use a tissue or a piece of soft cloth or chamois to fill it. So this pen, the Schaefer Snorkel, was you can fill it, you can throw your pen wiper away because you can fill it with this this handy snorkel that comes out. 
and then you dip just the snorkel in the ink and it should be full. Oh, see? They're a nice such steady stream there too. So it does work. But in order for this pen to work, it needs any number of things to work. It needs a rubber sack inside of a contraption. I'll just show it to you here. If I can. Come on, undo yourself. Are you opening up or not? There we go. Inside of this thing is a sack. So inside of this pen is a sack too. This pen has a sack and a le lever, uh, a pressure bar only, and then it's plastic. This one has a sack inside of this metal thing. And inside of this metal thing, or around this metal thing is this spring. And around over that is this thing here. And then there's space between this and the thing. So there's a lot of wasted space that could contain ink in this pen. But in addition to that rubber sack there having to be working, having to work, it also needs a little rubber gasket inside of here. So this is airtight because that's air pressure that causes this sack to depress. So, and then I think there's also a little rubber washer up here, because there's a screw that holds this thing on, and the screw has to be tight and airtight, so there's a little rubber washer there. And there's a little rubber washer here, inside of this thing. That's a little rubber washer right there. So there has to be one, two, three, four rubber parts that have to work in this pen. So on a scale of one to ten, how over-designed is this? Well, this is eleven. This is eleven. It goes to eleven. This is an eleven-sized pen. Now, the value of this pen is you get to throw your Kleenex away. But you also have to buy a certain kind of ink bottle. You had to buy the ink bottle that they designed for this pen. And see, normally when you put a pen in an ink bottle, you, you, there has to be a way where you, you have to sort of hold this. I'll just show you for God damn sake. Here's a cross section of an ink bottle. Here's the ink. Here's the ground. And for here, for this pen, you, you, know, you put it through the lid of the thing, the, the opening of the ink bottle, which of course you can't, and then you put the pen in, and you have to hold the pen. Here's the pen nib, here's the rest of the pen, and the snorkel comes out, and you have to hold the pen above the level of water, ink rather, and fill it. And you have to fill it by, you know, pushing this thing down. So there's force that you have to hold the pen very steady and push this down in order to do that. And if you push it down too far, then you're going to get the ink dirty, full of ink, the nib full of ink. And then you'll have to not, you'll have to take your pen wiper out of the trash and wipe your goddamn pen with it. So what Schaefer did to make you not have to do that, they had a special ink bottle designed which had a little glass shelf in it. And you'd tilt the bottle sideways to, to fill this glass shelf with ink. And then you would put the, you'd put the pen in to just that, and then the nib wouldn't get wet. <sighs> okay, so now they had to not only over, they had to over design this, they had to over design an ink bottle. I think the only good thing about these Schaefer snorkels is if you were having a f duel, if you had to, if you had, a, had to have a duel and you had to pick your weapon and pens were the weapon and ink was the bullets, this would be the pen to have because this one does shoot a very strong 
stream of ink relatively straight out of this thing. These things, you know, the ink will, the arc of the ink, here we'll draw the ordinance chart for you. So here's, here's our cannon and you know, the gravity is going to take care of the ink regardless. So the, the, you know, the ink, the ink will dr fall at the same degree regardless of, of anything that happens. But because of the speed that the snorkel will sh eject the ink, this will go faster as it falls. A regular pen, it would just sort of do that. So this is a good pen to have if you were to have a duel. So note to self. And if you really wanted to be tricky, of course you would, you know, if you had this pen and this pen in the dueling box, this one is a touchdown without the snorkel, and this would dribble out and this would shoot out. So, uh, but you, there's no way to guarantee that your opponent would choose the dribbler unless you somehow mesmerized him to, to choose that one. So really it's over over designed and it's very difficult to fix because if you generally the, the, the thing that needs to be replaced is the sack on the inside of that tube. And you have to take oh there's another rubber part. I forgot about this one. That's a rubber part. So that can't be broken. So there's five rubber parts. One, two, three, four. There's five rubber parts. So Good luck on that one. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't repair one of these things for three hundred dollars. <laughs> I wouldn't repair one for three hundred dollars. They're just, they take all day long. Well, for me, I mean, other people might know how to do this better, but you can find one better. There we go. It was a long way. Um, you know, they're really, they're. You have to uncork. You have to carefully take this out and without bending all of this stuff which of course is what you end up doing you end up b bending all of this and then getting them back straight is a bitch this is one of the, the you know Schaefer like the Parker Vacuumatic I think Schaefer did not expect ever to have to repair these pens they would just send you a whole new one of these things they, they, they didn't expect you to take them apart and fix them. They just send you an entire new assembly. They would probably call it that. And a, a reservoir assembly. They'd make some over, overdone name for it. So anyway, they do have, they do have value. Now I could put put Duncan Black's would, would this be a pen that Duncan Black would own? Duncan if you're out there would you own an over does you know you'd have to have the most temperamental sports car to go along with and which goes with your your speedy maybe 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 Duncan Black is, is isn't a private eye he's an international spy he works for the CIA. Of course that wouldn't be his real name though. His real name is probably, I don't know, Jasper White or something, you know, something. That's even too, Duncan Black is just a cool name. I want to meet you, Duncan Black, wherever you are. Duncan Black, so moistfully good, they'll always come back for more. I want to learn how to play in my ukulele jingles like that of, of food food products, and then walk in, walk up and down my supermarket singing that song and 
as I pass that the Duncan Hines aisle. And then when I go to the soup aisle, I'll sing, Mmm, good, mmm, good. That's what Campbell's soups are. Mmm, good. And then go to, oh, oh, spaghettios, the neat brown spaghetti you can eat with a spoon. And, you know, my first name. How does that go? My last name. M E Y E R. So, you know, just come up with an entire medley. I probably would have to go to a convenience store where I could, you know, sing them all relatively together without having to traipse halfway across Kingdom Come. I, I wouldn't do this at a Costco or a huge supermarket. It would have to be somewhere kind of quiet. And do it. Some, it's not quiet, a small store, you know, with maybe three aisles. You know. Of course, they may not have Duncan Hines cake making products at a convenience store because cake making is hardly convenient. Cake buying, they would have, you know, hostess ho hums and wingdings or whatever they're called, but they wouldn't actually have hostess cake making products. So I'll have to find the right store where all of my products are in the aisle that I can sing about. Yeah, I want, this is another thing. If, if I were president of the United States, that you. If I were president of the United States, I would I would make a law that says in a large supermarket you have to have the bachelor farmer aisle, bachelor aisle, and it would have milk, coffee, peanut butter and jelly, bread, and deodorant and shaving cream and razors. What else do bachelor farmers need? You know, black shoe polish. What else do I buy? I haven't bought black shoe polish in a million years, but what else would I, I'm imagining myself as a typical um, aspirin. There we go. Aspirin and beer. I don't drink anymore, but those are things that you need. So if there was an aisle or just a checkout lane, you know, it, this all could be just in a checkout lane. You know, rather than candy and the National Enquirer and Tums or something, you know, you can you can just have this. Milk, coffee, peanut butter and jelly, bread. Oh, cereal. You need to have some sort of Cheerios. Let's make it simple. Cheerios. And then th that's all it is. Maybe sugar. Sugar for your coffee. And frozen pizza. There. That's all you need. Frozen pizza. So, and toilet paper. Here we go. All of that. That's, that's the aisle. That's what I want on my aisle. Are you going to vote for me? Peer for president? I'm going to make life convenient for you. And this would be required in every gas station. In every... Um, Every grocery store would have to have one of these aisles. Well, I want to thank you for watching. And as I said, these were random thoughts. And if they were anything but random, let me know what they actually were. Thank you. Toodaloo.